Good evening, everybody. Happy to see you here as we come together to worship our great and loving God and give Him thanks. Uh, but to, to change it up a little bit, instead of talking and learning about why we should be thankful, we're going to learn instead about uh, how to be thankful, because I think sometimes we forget just how it looks to be thankful as God's uh, forgiven and loved people. Uh, we have just one announcement for this special service, and that's that the Christmas gala is coming up here on a week from Friday. So it's a week from Friday. Uh, I hope to see all of you there. The tickets are $35 pre and then 40 at the door. You can get those online at the Info Center, I believe, and the office. Uh, it should be a great event, and if you would like to help us set up, because it is such a great and big event, there's all sorts of good stuff to help us make sure that it goes off without a hitch. Uh, I think that's all we have for announcements. So let's go ahead and rise and greet one another. Let's read our Bible verse of the evening together. Jesus asked, We're not all ten cleansed? Where are the other nine? No one returned to give praise to God except this foreigner. In the name of God, our Heavenly Father, the Creator and Provider, in the name of God, His Son, Jesus Christ, in the name of God the Spirit, make a joyful noise to the Lord all the earth, serve the Lord with gladness, come into his presence with singing. Know that the Lord, he is God, it is he who made us and we are his, we are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him, bless his name. For the Lord is good, his steadfast love endures forever, and his faithfulness to all generations. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. You may be seated for the opening hymn.
Just a brief caution before we get into the uh, confessing our sins to God our Father. The gremlins have gotten into our slides, they tell me. So if you see th things are a little bit out of order, that's why. So bear with us on that. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. Lord God, we come to you today confessing that we are often unthankful for all the gracious gifts you have given us. So often we worry unnecessarily about our future and fail to be content with everything you have given us. Forgive our failure to be content and give us thankful hearts. For the sake of Jesus Christ, your Son, forgive us and fill us with the joy of your presence and the promise of our eternal salvation. Through the mercy and sacrifice of our Lord Jesus, we have all gained access to his grace by which we now stand. Therefore, by the power of the cross, as a servant of Christ, be assured that your sins are forgiven. In the name of the triune God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, and his mercy endures forever. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, your mercies are new every morning, and you graciously provide for all our needs of body and soul. Grant us your Holy Spirit, that we may be content with what you have given us, Give thanks for your benefits and serve you in willing obedience all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Old Testament reading is from the book of Deuteronomy, the eighth chapter. The whole commandment that I command you today you shall be careful to do, that you may live and multiply, and go in and possess the land that the Lord swore to give to your fathers. And you shall remember the whole way that the Lord your God has led you these forty years in the wilderness, that he might humble you, testing you to know what was in your heart, whether you would keep his commandments or not. And he humbled you and let you hunger and fed you with manna, which you did not know, nor did your fathers know, that he might make you know that man does not live by bread alone, but man lives by every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. Your clothing did not wear out on you, and your foot did not swell these forty years. Know then in your heart that as a man disciplines his son, the Lord your God disciplines you. So you shall keep the commandments of the Lord your God by walking in his ways and by fearing him. For the Lord your God is bringing you into a good land, a land of brooks of water, of fountains and springs, flowing out in the valleys and hills, a land of wheat and barley, of vines and fig trees and pomegranates, a land of olive trees and honey, a land in which you will eat bread without scarcity, in which you will lack nothing, a land whose stones are iron, and out of whose hills you can dig copper, and you shall eat and be full, and you shall bless the Lord your God for the good land he has given you. This is the word of the Lord. Our epistle reading this evening is from Paul's letter to the Philippians, chapter 4. 
Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. What you have learned and received and heard and seen in me Practice these things, and the God of peace will be with you. I rejoiced in the Lord greatly that now at length you have revived your concern for me. You were indeed concerned for me, but you had no opportunity. Not that I am speaking of being in need, for I have learned in whatever situation I am to be content. I know how to be brought low, and I know how to abound. In any and every circumstance, I have learned the secret of facing plenty and hunger, abundance and need. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. Yet it was kind of you to share my trouble, and you Philippians yourselves know that in the beginning of the gospel, when I left Macedonia, no church entered into partnership with me in giving and receiving except you only. Even in Thessalonica, you sent me help for my needs once and again. Not that I seek the gift, but I seek the fruit that increases to your credit. I have received full payment and more. I am well supplied, having received from Epaphroditus the gifts you sent, a fragrant offering, a sacrifice acceptable and pleasing to God. And my God will supply every need of yours according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. To our God and Father be glory forever and ever. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Please stand with me for the reading of the gospel. Our gospel is from St. Luke chapter 17 and will be the basis of Pastor Jared's sermon this evening. On the way to Jerusalem, Jesus was passing along between Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered a village, he was met by ten lepers, who stood at a distance and lifted up their voices, saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he said to them, Go and show yourselves to the priests. And they went, and they were cleansed. Then one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice. And he fell on his face at Jesus' feet, giving him thanks. Now he was a Samaritan. Then Jesus answered, Were not ten cleansed? Where are the nine? Was no one found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? And he said to him, Rise and go your way. Your faith has made you well. This is the gospel of the Lord. You may be seated.
Grace and peace to you from God, our Father, and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I don't know if any of you have heard it yet, but I have some incredible news, and I I hope that I'm the first one who, who gets to tell you. I mean, clearly you haven't heard yet, because otherwise you'd all be as excited as I am. Have you heard? The sun rose today. I woke up this morning and it was dark outside and I was so afraid because I didn't know if it was coming and I sat there and I held my breath and then finally it came and the sun rose and it shined down and the day was started. Isn't that great? Wow, I guess I must be the only one who is that excited about the sun rising. No, no. Even I don't think it's that incredible. In fact, it's kind of the mundane. We know the sun is going to rise, or at least we assume it will rise day after day after day. Tomorrow's Thanksgiving. It's a holiday when we're supposed to, surprise, surprise, give thanks for everything we have. But are we thankful? Or are we just joyous? As Christians, when we have these blessings, are we thankful to God or are we just elated, excited. Like, for instance, was I thankful that the sun rose today? I bet if I were to ask that before I started making my point, you all would have said, well, of course, you seemed so thankful. What would have clued you off? What told you I was thankful? Sure, I was a little louder than usual. Sure, I was excited. But what made you think I was thankful? I wanted something, I waited anxiously for it, I received it, I was happy. But was I thankful? I don't think so. You see, I think we all get joyful mixed up with thankful. Maybe you pray about what it is that you want or you actively pursue it, but what happens when you get that blessing that you think is going to fill some sort of hole in your life? I can't speak for all of you, but for me, whatever it is, when I get it, I'm more focused on the moment. I'm focused on the blessing. I'm focused on that thing that I thought would make my life better. And I completely forget about everything else. I even forget about maybe who it is that gave me that blessing, whether it be somebody here on earth or especially God. Oftentimes, I believe that I'm thankful, but I don't think I am. Maybe at best, as I'm running toward whatever that blessing is, I give a quick thanks over the shoulder, not even really making eye contact with whoever it is that I should be thankful to. So what does it mean to be thankful? Thankful. This is Thanksgiving Eve, and instead of telling you why we need to be, or why we should be thankful, I want to talk about what it means to be thankful. Because we have a lot of stuff to be thankful for. And we spent the whole last month talking about why we should be thankful and what we should do with our blessings and all of these things. We keep saying this word thankful, but what does it really mean? What does it come down to? You guys are here today because you are hopefully faithful uh, to God, right? We have these, these different adjectives to explain our life, but what is it to be thankful? Well, that's what Jesus talks about in his gospel reading today. He's got some faithful people, but they're not all that thankful. So we're going to talk about that gospel reading today. And we're going to see that maybe we fall short uh, like they do. Oop, my clicker's not working. Got to go old-fashioned. So in our reading today from Luke, Jesus is traveling with his disciples in his ministry. And he's traveling between Galilee and Samaria. So he's traveling between these borders which helps us to understand why it is that there's these Jewish people and one Samaritan, which we'll kind of talk about. So as he's walking along, he comes across a village. And in this village is lepers. So in this leper village, they would have been, you know, completely set aside. Nobody would want to go there because you were afraid of catching this disease. And from afar, these lepers, they see Jesus coming. And you see, Jesus, uh, his his healing and his powers, they precede him. Everybody knows who this Jesus guy is. And these lepers, they want a piece of him. So they shout from afar because, again, they know you don't go close to somebody who's healthy. They shout and they're like, Jesus, please have mercy. Notice they don't even ask for anything in particular. We're starting to see just how faithful they are. Jesus, please just have mercy on me. And to our surprise, Jesus doesn't just walk up to him like he does in 
You know, we see him spit in mud and ripen on people's eyes or touch them and they're healed. Instead, he simply tells them to go to the priests and be examined. And this might seem like an odd uh, statement from Jesus, right? He doesn't tell them something nice. He doesn't tell them he's going to heal them. He just sends them off. But then we see incredible faith. Because consider it for a second. What would you do if you were these lepers who wanted Jesus to heal you? He didn't walk up and touch you. He didn't give you the same sort of uh, spectacular thing to view as he did with other miracles. No, he just said, go. Do you think you'd go? What about our lives today? We say we trust God, but do we often go when he says go? Or do we say, just give me a little bit of a clue. Give me a little bit of a blessing and then I'll go. But nonetheless, these lepers, they go. They go and they, go, they head off to the temple to be uh, examined, to be shown that they are clean. And here's where the miracle happens. These individuals who were riddled with sin, their lives were, were basically over. I mean, imagine it. A disease where things are just kind of your skin and your body parts are not working anymore and before long it takes your life. Nobody wants to come talk to you. You are at the bottom of the bottom. Your life is just kind of done. And then you start walking with these other ten lepers hoping that Jesus would have healed you. And as they're walking, their power starts to come back. And life starts to get poured into dead flesh. And before long, you can imagine that they must have been so excited They must have been laughing, and I'm sure the crying was just, their tears were pouring out. Can you imagine being alongside them and seeing this amazing thing, this rejuvenation of life? They have everything before them now. They must have just been running. And then what happens? What happens in our story, in our gospel? All ten come running back to Jesus, and they fall to his feet, and they just give thanks, right? They're thankful, right? Right? Nine of them just keep on running. They head off to the priest because they want to start their new life. They want to forget all this torment that they had. And only one comes back. Do you imagine being Jesus in that moment? Sending off these ten people, loving them so much that you were going to act on their behalf to give them new life. And having only one come back? Man, that had to be hard. He was left sitting there in the streets as they ran away, I'm sure hoping they'd come, and only one thankful individual comes back. So one leper comes back cleansed to Jesus. And Jesus responds to him and says, Were there not ten cleansed? Where are the nine? The leper doesn't respond to Jesus here. But I do want to fill in the blanks for us. Because I think the nine were exactly where we would be or where we are when we get our blessings. I think the same question could be asked of us. Where are you when you get your your blessings? Where are you when it feels like life is going great? Where are you especially when it seems like you're in the darkness and all of a sudden God shines all of his love down on you and he sets you off on the right path? Do you fall down at the cross or do you just keep on running, excited, tears streaming down your face, ready to receive it all? I think I tend to be more there as well. Tomorrow's Thanksgiving, the time when we'll go and sit with family and friends and we'll, we'll recount the blessings of the year, hopefully. And we'll talk about all the great stuff we got to experience. But as you think about those, I want to challenge you to think, Did you give thanks to God in the moment? Did you remember to stop when you had those blessings and give thanks to the God who bestowed them upon you? Did you give fervent thanks like this one leper who who ran back to Jesus and fell on his knees and gave thanks for everything that he had? Are you starting to see why maybe we aren't so thankful? Sure, we're joyous. There's a lot of things to be joyous about as Christians. We've been saved. We've been set free from sin. God loves us so much and he gives us blessings each and every day. There's there's infinite reasons to be joyous or joyful. But are we thankful? 
Thankfulness is far more than just stopping and looking at the blessing. It's taking into account what the blessing is. It's taking into account what has been given. And most importantly, it's taking into account who gave it. It's looking at the one who gives the blessings. It's stopping and rejoicing for he who gives you what you have. And rejoicing in that fact. And rejoicing in that blessing. Rejoicing in the blesser. Dear friends, Jesus gave everything for you. He gave himself over for you and for me. Jesus is both blessing and blesser for everybody, for anybody who would believe in him. Jesus lived in this world so that you and I could know exactly who he is and what he would do. He knew some of the great blessings that you and I get to know. And he even knew the burdens that we were going to know. And in fact, he knew them better than any of us are ever going to know. Because only one person in this world, in all of eternity, needed to shout, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Only one person in all of eternity was without God for a moment, and that was Jesus. And he did it for you and for me. You see, the time came when Jesus, too, found himself alone. Like in this picture, this is the garden when he prays, and he shouts from afar, God, please take this cup from me. He wants mercy just like those lepers, but instead of giving the blessing that he wants, Jesus knows what he has to do. He knows that he has to go back to the one place, the last place he is going to go on this earth. He faithfully came there. He boldly gave himself to the ones who sought to kill him. He bravely stayed silent, even though he could have saved himself time and time again. He lovingly surrendered himself to the point of death for you and for me on the cross. And he powerfully returned to proclaim his victory over sin and the death and the devil, all for you and for me. He gave everything, everything for us that we might have his victory. And all we got to have is faith. And that's not even a faith we need to come to ourselves. He gave the Holy Spirit to us through the waters of baptism. He gave everything so that we could follow alongside him in this life, receiving our blessings. And the good news is that because he did all of that, when we do receive our blessings and we get so focused on them and we lose ourselves and we run full tilt toward the blessings and forget about God, when that guilt starts to set in and you feel like, oh, I'm, just, I'm so sinful, I should have went back. He is still there waiting for you to run full tilt back into his arms and love you unconditionally. We have all the reason to be thankful. All the more reason to stop. Stop looking at just the blessings and look at the one who gives us those blessings. I'd like to share a story with you today about what it would mean to be, or what it might look like to be thankful. This story is about a dreamer. It's about a young man who wanted to adventure. He wanted to experience all the blessings of this life. And even when, as he was young, he was kind of chaotic and not, didn't have a lot of friends. But in his chaos, he bumps into a young lady. Can you see where this story's going? And this young lady, she wants adventure too, and she wants to experience all the blessings and joys of this life. And they decide they're going to be best friends. And they go even further, and they decide not only are they going to be best friends, they're going to get married. Isn't it great? And they decide, you know what, we're going to go on one big adventure. We're going to experience one great joy in this life. Let's figure out what it's going to be, and let's plan for it and save for it. But as you know, Life sometimes doesn't go the way we plan. And as they start to set aside money for this one great joy, the one thing they're going to be thankful for, life gets in the way and the bills start to pile up and illnesses happen. They start to get a little older and they get a little more sick. And these young people become not so young. Before long they get older and this lady dies. And she leaves him behind. And you know what? They never actually get to go on that one big adventure. And he gets kind of bitter. And he gets angry. And he decides, what do I have to be thankful for? 
The one great joy I had in my life is gone. But as he's cleaning out his house and thinking about the love lost, he finds this letter. The letter says, thanks for the adventure. Now go have a new one. Love, Ellie. You see what it is to be thankful? You see, she never made it on this great adventure. But she knew the life she was on was the adventure. And it was the blessing. He was the blessing. Being thankful isn't being so worried about all the things we think we need or filling the holes in our life with the stuff we think we need. It's stopping and giving thanks for the stuff we have and looking to the God who gives it all to us. If you haven't figured it out, though, my story, as sad as it is, uh, it wasn't actually real. This is from Disney Pixar's Up, and even just telling it kind of makes me choke up a little bit for a kid's movie. It kind of makes you sad. This holiday season, I want to encourage you to be thankful for the adventure. I want you to be thankful for the big and little things. You see, life is going to continue to happen. And God, being our loving God, is going to continue to lavish you with blessings. But instead of just focusing on those blessings, I want you to focus on God. Don't let yourself get lost in them and forgive, forget to run back to the one who gave them. And even if you do forget, turn back anyways because he is still there waiting to receive you and receive your thanks and your praise and your love. In this Thanksgiving, I want to challenge you to something. And I'm not just saying this because I'm up here talking. No, I really want to challenge you. So, so lock it away in your minds. Let's see if we can get it to happen. This Thanksgiving, I want to challenge you as you're sitting with friends and family and giving thanks for everything you have. I want you to put something special on that list. Give thanks for God. Don't just give thanks for the blessings God gives you. Don't just give thanks for the fact that God loved you so much that he redeemed you and set you free and is going to one day give you his inheritance. Don't just give thanks for all the blessings of God. No, give thanks for God. Give thanks for everything that he is. Give thanks that despite our sinful nature and our undeserving, uh, uh, un the fact that we are undeserving, give thanks for God. Simply thank him for being God. Simply thank him for loving you. Just give thanks for him. Because I promise you, in that thankfulness, in that simple thankfulness, it's going to shine out in this world. It's going to be unique because so often we get lost in the blessing. So if you give thanks for God, everything else is going to be the, the cherry on the top of the ice cream. Give thanks to a loving God who loved you first. Can you do that for me this year? Do you think we can give thanks just for God? Can we tack him on our list of thanks giving? Let's start today. Let's pray. Dear God, we give you thanks for all the blessings. We give you thanks for the adventure and everything that you have done for us, Lord. But most importantly, we give you thanks for you. Thank you for being our loving God. Thank you for setting us free. Thank you for residing with us in the highs and the lows. Thank you for being you each and every day for all eternity until I come face to face with you. Thank you. Amen. At this time, uh, I invite you to uh, rise as we are going to affirm our faith in uh, the creed. But instead of just reciting the creed, we're actually going to uh, recite from the uh, first article of the creed. And then what does this mean? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. What does this mean? I believe that God has made me in all creatures, that he has given me my body and soul, eyes, ears, and all my members, my reason and all my senses, and still takes care of them. He also gives me clothing and shoes, food and drink, house and home, spouse and children, land, animals, and all I have. He richly and daily provides me with all that I need to support this body and life. He richly, defend, or he, 
sorry, I threw y'all off because I have the mic. We'll start back on that. He defends me against all danger and guards and protects me from all evil. All this he does only out of fatherly divine goodness and mercy without any merit or worthiness in me. For all this, it is my duty to thank and praise, serve and obey him. This is most certainly true. At this time, we receive the offerings. Gracious Lord, in thanks and praise and praise and thankfulness to you, we bring to your altar a portion of what you have first given us in love. Father, we pray that you would bless these offerings to Peace Lutheran Ministries as they share your gospel message with the world. These things we ask in Jesus' name, amen. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. Oh, give thanks to the God of gods. Oh, give thanks to the Lord of lords, for his steadfast love endures forever. Oh, give thanks to the God of heaven, for his steadfast love endures forever. O oh, give thanks to the Lord, call upon his name, make known his deeds among the people. Gracious Father, bless member Gary Seafelt, who is currently hospitalized, and grant him healing and restored health according to your good and gracious will. We pray for Ray, a friend of the Blemkes, that you would be with her and her concerns. And Father, we give you thanks for the saints who have gone before us, in whose lives your great faithfulness is shown. We name today members Paul Seconi, Eugene Hodek, Alex Hintz, and Lois Marie Midas, all of whom have recently entered heaven. 
Grant peace and comfort that only you can give to their families and friends as they mourn the loss of their loved ones. O oh, give thanks to the Lord, call upon his name, make known his deeds among the peoples. Sing to him, sing praises to him, tell of all his wondrous works, glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Amen. Please stand with me as we pray the prayer the Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in one body, and be thankful. O Christ, grow richly in you, teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs with thanksgiving in your hearts to God. And whatever you do in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus giving thanks to God the Father through him. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and grant you his peace. Amen. <laughs>